So there's this upcoming transit that I think should be on everybody's radar because it's a wonderful moment that I think will provide great mitigation during what could otherwise be some real intensity here in the month of August. And that's the moon in Libra while Venus is in Cancer and this very enjoyable mutual reception that's going to happen. So great, welcome here, welcome to the channel. Um, this video is gonna be just a transit update, uh, a video where I wanna talk about and contextualize some transits and, and then highlight this one primary golden opportunity, this really sweet transit that I think we can all get to enjoy. Lord knows we need it, right? I mean, there's been so much happening in these fixed signs. The crux of our fixed axis has been under great pressure since early July, building and building and building. I think I'm gonna release this video right on one of the climaxes, which is the Mars, Uranus, North Node, triple conjunction. Then of course, a week later, Mars will square Saturn and Mars does not leave the fixed axis until 20 August. There's still a very intense full moon in Aquarius, closely uh, conjoined Saturn and then square Mars. So we're really not out of the woods yet. And frankly, as a traditional astrologer, I spent a lot of my career, early career, just looking at the seven traditional planets because of how powerful they can be, how embedded they are in the development of the system and the foundations of the system. And so there's something to be said about that square between Mars and Saturn perfecting on 7 August and how that might even be more intense theoretically than the uh, Uranus North Node conjunction that uh, is playing here with Mars. But you know, we're in a window. What I've said this whole time is the window has opened of the fixed intensity. It will close in mid to late August and then we'll have a whole nother part of the chart and part of our lives to manage and navigate and that will be that Mars retrograde in Gemini story. Here are the dates that I'm interested in that I want you to think about. 2 August, 6 in the morning in Central Europe, you have the moon entering Libra and upon the moon's entry into Libra, it will be ruled by Venus and look where Venus is. Venus is in Cancer during the whole of this moon transit. And so it's what's called a mutual reception. So to understand why a mutual reception is so important, I wanna to turn to Firmicus Maternus, the ancient Roman lawyer astrologer who wrote in Latin um, in his book, Ancient Astrology Theory and Practice. And this is the Brahm translation. You can find it online. It's a free PDF that you can download. This is in book two of Firmicus's collection of collected writings there on astrology. Book two chapter 20. While he's not writing about reception in this section, he is writing about a fundamental principle of all of ancient astrology, which relates to reception. Here on paragraph eight, he says, for if the ruler of the sign is well located, that planet about which we are inquiring also shares in part of the good fortune of the host's joy. But if the ruler of the sign is dejected in any way, that planet about which we are inquiring, even though it is placed in a fortunate house, will be hindered. So it's the interrelationship between the planet and the ruler of that planet by sign is a foundational principle of all astrology. And I want to just reiterate that rulership is key. It's fundamental. We can see when we want to examine the Libra moon, one of the fundamental things we have to look at is, well, where is Venus? Because Venus rules Libra. Venus is then in Cancer. When we want to examine Venus, we have to say, well, where is the moon? Because the moon is the ruler of Cancer and that moon is in Libra. And so you can see there's a mutual reliance that both the outcome of Venus and the moon in this case are each other. They both need each other and rely on each other. And that's what's so powerful about this particular Libra moon transit. So the moon enters Libra, like I said, to August, six in the morning. The moon perfects its square with Venus, three August, 1954 in Central Europe. So in the evening there on Wednesday, and then the moon enters Scorpio, 1346 here on Thursday. So there's a whole pocket, Tuesday, Wednesday, and part of Thursday, where you get this extremely beneficial exchange between the moon and Venus. So the other thing I just want to point out in this chart is what, why it is also so powerful. Where is Mars? Where is Saturn? Where are the nodes? They're all in fixed signs, right? They've conglomerated in these fixed signs to put pressure on that part of our charts. The malefic so-called have all joined this one axis, this one modality. It frees up cardinal signs. So with the moon, averse to Mars and trining Saturn. Venus, averse to Saturn and sextiling Mars in the lunar nodes. These difficult points do not harm the moon and Venus. So we really can have the full flourishment, the full flowering of the moon-Venus exchange. That's what's so unique about this 
particular moment. It's a waxing moon. The moon is growing in light. The moon's next aspect, if you can get it while it's applying to Venus, the moon will be separating from a sextile to the sun and applying to a square to Venus. So the last aspect and next aspect of the moon are potent. It really is a time that we can lean into, particularly because this is after the Mars conjunction to Uranus in the North Node. There's this pocket here where maybe we can kind of breathe some strength into our lives, particularly that cardinal sector, before Mars and Saturn perfect the square and then before the fixed intensity is over. This is sort of a breath of fresh air, an eye in the storm, a real solace during the moment here that we're experiencing. Now, I want to turn next to staying on the delineation just of this moment here early this week. And I want to turn to Stephen Arroyo again, Chart Interpretation Handbook. This is a really cool book. He just breaks down the symbols in some clear, concise ways that will allow you to start interfacing with planetary symbols from more of a modern or contemporary astrological context, but that's okay. These guys are awesome. I mean, all of the guys that were in gals and folks that were writing second half of the 20th century, the humanist astrologies that developed, the evolutionary astrologies, the explorations with the outer planets, the use of psychology, all of them, I think, added great, great value to our field. But in this book, you can see Stephen Arroyo. What I want to do is look at the two energies. What does he say? Moon and Libra, Venus and Cancer. And what can we kind of learn from him? What can we take from him? We already know that the technical astrology, in terms of the ancient astrology, is telling us there's a strong mutual support and this kind of expansive opportunity here. So he says, Moon and Libra reacts with objectivity to the environment and all experiences with a strongly developed sense of fairness thinks before reacting, weighs all sides of a situation. And so, you know, there you go. Finding balance and harmonization of polarities is necessary for emotional tranquility, feeling secure when involved in close relationships. So I'm, I'm highlighting mainly the more auspicious delineations because of how auspicious this exchange is. You might be more deliberate, more thoughtful, more considerate of others, bringing them into more of a deliberate or considered model for how we think about emotional security and safety. All of these things are greatly enhanced when the moon is in Libra, so auspiciously configured. And then that is joining Venus and Cancer. What does he say here? Express affection sensitively, comfortingly, protectively, tenaciously, need to nurture and be nurtured to feel a part of a family in order to feel comfortable, sharing energy with others, the urge for pleasure and closeness, right? A receptive and dependent qualities. So when you combine this, you can see Venus wants the safety and maybe the more emotional container. The moon in Libra wants a more deliberate and refined uh, sense of safety. And so I think this is great energy to maybe take a deliberate time away with your loved ones say, let's spend some time together deliberately carving out spaces for intimacy and closeness with people you care about. You could even do it in the safety and comfort of the home, inviting people over for a dinner party, maybe to have intellectual exchange, right? That moon in Libra, the intellectual side of Libra. All of that are the kind of opportunities that we can utilize during this very powerful transit. And I will say, it's just a great transit and a great little pocket here for things you wanna do this week. Tuesday, Wednesday, particularly when the moon's applying closely to that Venus in Cancer, you know, if you have to do something, that would be the time to do it. This is the election, the chart, the electional chart to, to get some stuff done during this week, particularly along the lines of what we've just explored. Moon, Venus, mutual reception, the comfort, the safety, the deliberate connection, the intellectual connection, the feeling safe emotionally. I think the emotional safety often does come with a verbalization of the emotions and that's that libra combined air sign libra combined with the earth combined with the uh, water sign uh, venus and that mutual exchange and we can talk about how we feel hey can i share with you what's going on with me yes i love you please let me sit down you have my attention oh thank you let me make you some food do you need some tea can i pamper you can i give you a blanket whatever we need to do to, to those in our lives. The thing about love, I've been thinking about this all week because just from some unrelated things, but what is love? The real love, the real kind of love. And the real love to me is the love for a baby that's help. When, when people are helpless, do you show them kindness? Do you give them comfort and safety? That's really what love is. The weakest amongst us, so babies that need constant care, we can love babies. We can hold them and care for them and nurture them. Or the infirm, 
or people that are advanced in age that need our love and, and support. So, and that kind of love, this sort of agopic, you know, nurturance can, you can apply that to every type of relationship, the erotic relationships we have, the friendships we have, the professional relationships we have. We can love others deliberately and statedly. We can come out and say, yes, what do you need? Share with me and be that kind of loving presence. This is what I would say the opportunity is very strongly moon in Libra, mutually received by Venus and Cancer. Enjoy that transit. Let it nurture you as you prepare for the rest of this month and some of these intense Fridays that are coming up. Have a great, great time. Talk to you soon.